One, two, one, two, three, four. Welcome everyone to the morning announcement. I'ma say my name so you can pronounce it. Bo, ma, ni, ar, ma. Shout out to early risers. I see who you are. My morning ritual. Thanks for having me over. Start with audio, visual, those of sand cover. My favorite occasions a few moons away. I'm counting rotations to watermelon day. If you're with me this morning, I hope that you're with it. Two things that I want and three ways to get it. Black solidarity, African independence. Honor the ancestors, prepare descendants. Third thing you gotta do is love right now. I mean that in every sense and every way you know how. Now throw them up and say what should increase on one Welcome to the morning announcements with Bomani Arma on Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2022. I am Bomani Arma and we are 214 days away from Watermelon Day at Sankofa. We are here to honor the ancestors, prepare the descendants, and love right now. Friends, help me break the algorithm, pass along some positivity, some RBG energy. Join my email list at notarapper.com. You can find the links in the description of this video. All right, friends, every morning we start with a libation. Today's libation is going to be for Sadie Tanner Mosul Alexander. Sadie Alexander. Here we go. January 2nd, 1884 to March 25th, 1951. A pioneering black professional and civil rights activist of the early to mid 20th century. In 1921, Mosul Alexander was the first African American to receive a PhD in economics in the United States. In 1927, she was the first woman to receive a law degree from the University of Pennsylvania Law School and went on to become the first black woman to practice law in the state. She was also the first national president of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, serving from 1919 to 1923. Mosul Alexander and her husband were active in civil rights, both in Philadelphia and nationally. In 1946, she was appointed to the President's Committee on Civil Rights established by Harry Truman. All right, let's get into this Sadie Mosul Alexander quote. I knew well that the only way I could get the door open was to knock it down because I knocked all of them down. Sadie Alexander. I love this quote. I'm going to read it again. I knew well that the only way I could get the door open was to knock it down because I knocked all of them down. Sadie Mosul Alexander. Can you imagine the amount of pressure a young black woman would be under as she's trying to be the first African-American to receive a PhD in economics? All the stereotypes about African intelligence and the capacity of women were thrown at her at the same time. There most certainly would have been doors slammed in her face as she walked down the halls of academia, of law, and business. She was a lawyer, an economist, and a community leader, all at the turn of the century when Black people were getting lynched daily and women had just barely won the right to vote. Sadie used her courage and intellect as a battering ram. She has completely changed the world around her. I am thoroughly impressed by this ancestor as I am with all, the, all of them on our list. I am glad she gave us this quote to preserve her spirit of tenacity. Let's pour a libation for Sadie Mosul Alexander. We'll never forget, so never fear. For homies who ain't here, we pouring out a beer. Because of you, it'll never be the same. We keep saying your name while we pour champagne. For the mothers and the father figures, your flames to flickers, we pouring out some liquor. We're the sons and the daughters of heroes and martyrs. Honor you by pouring out some water. Friends, today's Libation is poured for Sadie Mosul Alexander. Thank y'all very much. I appreciate that. Let's keep this going. Today is the first day back to school for the students here where I live, uh, Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, I've got songs on my new album for the kids called Baba Bomani's Beatbox Basement. This album is only available on Bandcamp right now. Go to my website, babagatbars.com or notarapper.com or go to the link in the description that you see of this video. Um, I'm really proud of the opening track of the song. I, hopefully this is a, a song that will get your young people inspired and ready to go in the morning. Um, we're going to have some fun with this. Friends, this next song is called Grow Today. Bobble Bobble Gap Bars dot com. 
What's up, y'all? This is Baba Bomani broadcasting to you from Baba Bomani's beatbox basement. Here's what I need. At the count of three, I need everyone to say peace and throw up the deuces. One, two, three. Peace. I'm here with my girl Salam to make sure everybody has a wonderful day of learning and growing. Here we go. Yeah. Again. I get to grow some more, let the good times begin Even if I tumble, I give it a positive spin As long as I learn, I win Feeling good as I'm stepping out I can feel my body and my brain stretching out I gotta learn today, so check it out Listen to the teachers, see what they talking about I get some time to spend with my buddies I learn from them and they learn something from me Feeling lovely, old games, new discoveries I love learning and I love me, uh, yeah Friends, that was Grow Today featuring my homegirl, my um um Salam. She came through and crushed that rhyme for me. Thank y'all very much. Uh, thank y'all for supporting me on on this uh, early Tuesday morning as we get back to school. And I hope your students are excited to grow today. Uh, make sure you go and support uh, the movement here by going to my website. You can buy the Watermelon Man merch, um, the Watermelon Flag Apparel. I got the RBG flag. I got the Maryland flag. I got the DC flag. They're going to be new ones coming very soon. You can also get your morning announcements merch. All right. Um, you can get the cup, honor the ancestors, prepare the descendants and love right now. You can also get it on a t-shirt in both red, black, and green and black and or white. Um, I've got my RBG honor the ancestors mug right here. I'm drinking my coffee from this every morning and make sure that I remember my motto as we get this done every day, all right? Now, friends, here's what I wanna do. I am bringing back tonight's book um, with the help from my friends from Africa, Access, all right, and the Africana Book Awards. Some of my, one of my favorite parts of my program from last year, I had stopped doing it for about a month, was bringing you a book every week to make sure you read it to your students and giving you where you can go get it and making sure that we are giving our students more information about being African, being African American. Um, to do this, I have partnered with the Africana Book Awards. All right. Now I'll be I'll be real. This is my family at Howard University. Um, and this makes my job really easy to bring you a book every morning. All right. Now um, let me give you some information about the organization as I play uh, one of their videos in the background from the Africana Book Awards. Africa Access is a 501c3 organization that was founded in 1999 to help schools, public libraries, and parents improve the quality of their K-12 collections on Africa. The Africa Access Review, Read Africa, and Children's Africana Book Awards, CABA, have been effective initiatives in our efforts to inform the public about quality K-12 books in Africa. 
on Africa. In 1991, Africa Access, in collaboration with the Outreach Council of the African Studies Association, created the Children's Africana Book Awards with three major objectives. One, to encourage the publication of children's and young adult books that contribute to a better understanding of African societies and issues. Two, to recognize literary excellence. And three, to acknowledge the research achievements of outstanding authors and illustrators. The first Cabo was presented in 1992. Today, over 127 books have been recognized and more than 100 authors and illustrators are members of our winner's circle. Each winning title has been vetted by our awards jury, which is composed of African studies and children's literature scholars. All right. We're, we're watching the, the awards, I believe, from about three years ago. This must have been the pre-COVID awards. Um, I was just at the last award ceremony. It was amazing to meet all the authors and the people who are passionate about bringing young people great stories about Africa. So they are more, um, hey, if we're going to repatriate, we got to get used to understanding what's going on in Africa. Uh, so those are all the award winners. This is an amazing event. And I would like to thank the Kaaba Book Awards for making my job easier bringing you books about Africa. Now, today's book about Africa is called Grandpa Cacao. All right, I'm going to read you the publisher's description of it, and then I'm going to read you a short part of the Africa Access Review. Uh, Grandpa Cacao, the author Elizabeth Zunon, this beautifully illustrated story connects past and present as a girl bakes a chocolate cake with her father and learns about her grandfather harvesting cacao beans in West Africa. Chocolate is the perfect treat everywhere. As a little girl and her father bake her birthday cake together, daddy tells the story of her grandpa Cacao, a farmer from the Ivory Coast in West Africa. In, in a land where elephants roam and the air is hot and damp, grandpa Cacao worked in his village to harvest cacao, the most important ingredient in chocolate. Chocolate is a gift to you from Grandpa Cacao, Daddy says. We can only enjoy chocolate treats thanks to farmers like him. Once the cake is baked, it's ready to eat. But there isn't. But this isn't her only birthday present. There is a special surprise waiting at the door. All right, you definitely should go pick up this book. I put the link in the description out where you can order it from Sankofa Video and Books, and you can also read the more extensive review. Here is part of the Africa Access Review. The picture book begins with a young girl, presumably in the U.S., making chocolate cake with her father. As they blend the ingredients, father tells her about her Ivorian grandfather and his cacao farm. Father notes his role as a seven-year-old, working with others in the village, gathering and scooping out cacao pods after his schoolwork and chores were done. As he grew older, he helped Grandpa Cacao bag the beans to sell to cacao buyers. The money the family earned bought food, school supplies, uniforms, books, and fabric for special occasion clothes. The story ends with a sweet surprise. I'm not even going to give that away for y'all. Zunon's text and illustrations do an excellent job of showcasing this satisfying family story and capturing the time-consuming, labor-intensive process cacao farming entails. She makes it easy to identify Grandpa Cacao as a young man by representing him and the village cacao workers in white, opaque screen print shapes. Zunun explains that she uses the opaque techniques to show how Grandpa exists in the little girl's imagination as an almost mythical figure. The tropical backgrounds of the cacao plantation and the contemporary scenes are done in oil paint on watercolor paper with college with collage elements. I apologize. All right, grown folks, you need to go out there and buy the young person in your life, Grandpa Cacao by Elizabeth Zunon. It's an incredible book. I read it to my daughter several times. I'm looking forward to reading it with my son. All right, friends, we are coming up close to the end of the program. I want to um, end with playing the Black National Anthem. If you've been watching the program before, you understand that I am practicing the Black National Anthem because I want to have it down when I do my special uh, Frederick Douglass Writing Club performance at the Public Playhouse. Baba Bomani and the Frederick Douglass Writing Club, writing for freedom since 1838. This will be happening at Prince George's County's Public Playhouse on Sunday, February 5th, 2023, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you want more information, Go to any of my websites, go to the link in the description of this video. Um, this is going to be an incredible, interactive, 
experience for your students. Everybody's going to get a Frederick Douglass Writing Club journal, um, and I'm going to be wrapping all the way through it and showing you how to write and hopefully inspiring the next generation of young writers from my hometown, Prince George's County, Maryland. Make sure you come through. All right, friends, so let's get ready to do this. The next thing I'm going to do for you is the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, written by J. Rosamond Johnson and James Weldon Johnson. Friends, that was the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing by James Weldon Johnson and Jay Rosamond Johnson. Friends, that concludes our program for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. There are three things I want you to do today. Honor the ancestors, prepare the descendants, and love right now. At the count of three, I need everyone to say peace and throw up the deuces, and I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Here we go. One, two, three. Peace.